For the past weeks, here's a peek on what the students were doing. At home, they were probably running around looking for wires and pieces of metals and magnets. Or they were practically making a mess, putting liquids over each other and trying to make things work. And at school, day after day, they were consulting and experimenting with their teachers. When, why, when mixing two chemicals, it turned green instead of red? Or why even all, all, although all the wires are connected, no electricity is going on? So today, all this running around, searching for tools and trying things out has led us to this day. When we can say that the students are finally ready to present their projects and we can now officially welcome you to Grade 7 Science Fair of 2019. So what do the students have in store for us? Can we light up a bulb without using a lamp, with a lamp, without being connected to wires, like you're standing here and are, Karim, you know the answer, so don't say. <laughs> Can we actually extract DNA and see it with our own eyes? Um, can we know if milk and cheese that you buy from the store is pure or not? Or can we find what's inside in a leaf? Look inside it. Can the students do this themselves? Or how about riding the wave of technology? Is it possible for you to actually control turning the lights on and off just using your mobile? All this and more we will see today. So let's start with the first class, 7A. Um, while the class is getting ready, let me ask you, how would you rate your information in science? General knowledge. If it's excellent, average, you don't know much about science. Can you show me with your hands, please? Okay, average, we have average. Uh, what about the people in the middle? Average or down, what do you think? Good? Okay, so we will see because we will have some questions in science and we will test your knowledge, so you can test yourself in them, okay? By the way, some people think that science is not for everyone, but I can tell you that each and every one of you knows about science, okay? For example, uh, I will ask you a question and you just say yes or no, okay? You didn't raise your hand when I asked, do you know science or no? Okay, so uh, are you a mother? Um, so you had a child and you were pregnant and you saw him grow up and uh, probably he was sick and you went to the doctor and all these things, right? Of course. Yes. So do you think this is related to science? Yes, of course. Yes. This is biology. So right there, this is biology, the concept that every woman, almost every woman here has gone through biology, okay? Um, can I ask you something? Okay, so um, uh, in the kitchen, yeah, how are you in the kitchen? Are you good? Uh, yeah. So now in Ramadan, do you make good food and uh, good food? Okay, so uh, do you know what's the right temperature to use when cooking food? What things to put to make the food uh, enhance the flavor and make it better? Uh, yes, uh, I, uh, I use some things to make uh, this better. So do you think this is related to science? Yes, yes. This is actually chemistry. So we have chemistry in the kitchen. That's another branch of science. And um, finally, uh, okay. Did you ever ride a bike when you were young or you taught your children how to ride a bike? Yes. So you saw the wheels and how they're connected with the gear and how the bike works, right? Okay, yes. So do you think this is related to science? Some. Yes, science? this is actually physics. This is the branch of science physics, how things work and mechanics. So uh, science is in all our lives. Science is life, okay? So um, if I kept talking about science, I will not stop because I really love science. So I have to give the mic to someone else so I can stop. Okay, Mr. Man, you ready? Hey guys, good morning. How are you? Are you ready? Hmm. I'm so excited to see your project today. Hmm. Let's start. Yes. Shh. Hi, Joanna. Hi, Hannah. How are you? Hey. 
Can you tell us what is your project? A hard working, hard working experiment. Hard working experiment. Okay, can you show us what is this? No, the project itself. Ah, okay. Uh, this is the heart, and we will pump the heart so the blood ha has to go through the, the tube. So this is model of heart. Yes. What is the function for it? Uh, we have to uh, contract it so it can through the blood can go through the tubes, the blood vessels. The blood, the blood vessels. Excellent to pump the blood to the whole body. Okay. Thank you so much. Meher, I know your experiments take a long time, so I wanted to start with you. Can you tell us what is the, the project of you? Uh, getting uh, storage from leave. Getting storage from leave. Okay, so what is the science base of your project? To uh, test that uh, leave make photosynthesis process or no? Making what? Making what? Photosynthesis process or no? Photosynthesis project? Uh, Process or not? Okay, so what is the source? What is the importance of the source in this project? Uh, to, uh, to make uh, her food. So this is the food of the plant? Okay, start. What is the first step? Uh, to put the leaf in uh, boiled wood. So please, anyone can help us to get the boiling water? Thank you. Why you put the leaf in the boiling wood? To kill its cells. Okay, we'll leave you now and come again. Omar, what's your experiment, Omar? Uh, extracting DNA from strawberry. Oh, DNA. Okay, what's the first step? Strawberries. Then we're gonna put uh, the soap, this soap, in the strawberries mix. Why you must add soap? Sorry. Why you must add soap? Uh, so um, it doesn't. So um, the, the 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 DNA can dis uh, appear, not disappearing. What do you know about DNA? Uh, DNA, it's, it's, uh, it, it, it's inside of the nucleus uh, of the cell and carry the, all genetic organism, uh, all the genetic material of the organism. So his experiment to show the DNA. Can you imagine this DNA found inside the nucleus, inside the cell? And we cannot see the cell without using a microscope. So how we can see the DNA now? Now we add the water. Adding water. Then the salt. Salt. Why salt? So and because of the, the same of the soap, so it can the, the DNA doesn't disappear in the in the mixture. So, so it's help DNA to get out from the nucleus? Yeah. Yes. It helps it. Now we need to mix it. We have to mix it carefully. It takes a little bit of time to mix. Now, now when we're done mixing it, uh, we're gonna fil uh, filter it. Okay, we will come to you after filtering. Meher, what did you do? I, do, I put a plant in uh, put the leaf in the, the test tube. So you get it out from the boiling water and put it in the test tube? Yes. Yeah. I will put alcohol in it to, uh, to uh, get out the green color from it. Okay, for how much time you will leave it in the alcohol? Uh, for three minutes, three to four minutes. 
Okay, we'll come to you later. Hello, Kiro. Hello, Bono. Oh, or Abanos. Oh, what's your experiment? Uh, when we lay when we lay egg in Pepsi. Okay, so the effect of Pepsi on egg. Okay, so what did the can you show us what happened? Uh, this is before, and this is after. So what is the scientific base of this experiment? Uh, uh, the Pepsi, uh, so the Pepsi, uh, uh, the broke the calcium uh, f uh, from the egg. And uh, like this, uh, we happened for uh, us, uh, can broke uh, the, the bone uh, for, uh, for, uh, for people. Excellent, thank you so much. Hey, Omar. Sorry. Okay. No problem. Now we're gonna add the alcohol in the mixture. <coughs> now we wait for three minutes and it'll be done. Okay, I'll wait for three minutes. Noor, hello Noor. How are you? Hi. What's your project, Noor? Lava lamp. Lava lamp. Lava lamp. Can you show us what is the lava lamp? I will go first water. Okay. Then baby oil. I need some of them on, on my skin. Why? I need some of it on my skin. Do you agree? Okay. The baby oil sinks down. Then I'll put uh, food coloring. Any food coloring we want, you want. Then I'll put vitamin C. I'll break first the vitamin C in half. Why you must add vitamin C? Because it to produce the produce the water with baby oil, make the bubble uh, go faster up and down. Like to produce bubble, which kind of gases that produce uh, carbon dioxide? Okay, okay, okay. Yes. It's amazing. Thank you so much. Finish? Omar, finally, can we see the DNA? Yes. As you can see, let me, let me get it out. Wow. Wow. Amazing, Omar. Here's the DNA. Well done. <laughs> Do you know the DNA, the length of DNA, maybe between one to two meters? Do you know this? And from one to two meters, it's inside the cell. This is like a miracle of God. Thank you so much. Meher, huh? You need mo more time? Okay. Laura, amazing Laura. How are you? What's your project? Uh, smoker's lung and uh, the unhealthy lung and uh, healthy lungs. The difference between healthy and unhealthy lung? Okay. Can you show us your project? Yes. Done, but so can you explain what happened here? What the difference between the healthy and unhealthy? A healthy lung can move quicker and easier, but the unhealthy can, uh, moves harder and slower. Excellent, thank you so much. <laughs> Steven, hello. What is this? Three bottles of uh, fountain. Three bot mm -hmm. Fountain with the three bottles. Excellent. So, can you show us your project? We had 
uh, add some water. Take your time. Then we will upset the idea. Then we add some water. Wow. Excellent, guys. Do you know what the scientific base of this project? Yeah, the, this project shows us uh, the potential energy can provide us power by using water and uh, air and pressure. Excellent, thank you. Hi, Rudy. What you will do today? What's your project? Rising water expression. Experiment. Experiment. Okay, can you show us? Matter. Matches. With a matches, coin, toilet glass, and food and water, food coloring. Now, I um, made the matches with the pour with the with the coin. Then I will put the food coloring. Then I bring. Can I help you? Wow, the water raising up, really amazing. So do you know what this happened? What is the scientific base of your experiment? When I put the glass lower the, the match, the glass, the water burned all the oxygen and went out. Excellent, so the water in the state of the oxygen that burned or consumed during the burning? Okay, thank you so much. Meher, did you finish? So you get it out from the alcohol? Yeah. I'll leave it for like one minute. So what, why its color become Blue? Because the idea makes starch uh, became blue. What's the idea? This is indicator or something? Yeah, indicator for starch. So guys, can you see the leaf become blue? This is the mean of the leaf containing starch or the food of the plant. Thank you so much. <laughs> My lovely Pheri. Hello. Okay, what's your experiment? Uh, 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 vinegar volcano. Vinegar volcano. So you make a model like volcano? Okay, can you show us? First, I will put the sodium bicarbonate. Uh, and I will, add, uh, I will add some food color. At the end, I will add vinegar. Wow.
Do you know why this happens? What is this puppels? Um, uh, the chemical between uh, uh, vinegar and sodium bicarbonate, uh, it will make uh, carbon dioxide gas. Excellent. Thank you so much. Hi. Hi. What's your project? Uh, generator. Generator. Okay. What you will do? Can you show us? I will connect wires to the generator. So this is generator? Yes. So you make electric circuit? Yes. And so? The wires helps uh, to uh, move uh, the energies through it, then to the electric board. What is this? It's electric board. It's a lead. Wow. Can you tell me what is the scientific base of this? Uh, when I do like this, there is energy coming uh, from the generator, uh, then moving through the Wire. wires, then going to the electric board to light up the LEDs. Do you know what is the kind of energy that's formed from generator? It's a kinetic energy. Thank you so much. Hello. Hello, Mustafa. <laughs> Can you take this? What's your problem? Uh, how can I observe the materials inside the plant? Can you observe the material inside plants? Okay. Yes, I need water. Water. We need water, Mrs. Rehem. Mrs. Rehem. Okay, welcome here. Yes. Yes, Om. Um, What's your project? How do yeast reproduce? How do yeast reproduce? How do yeast reproduce? Okay, show me. You add. What is this? Sugar. You add sugar to warm water. And then you add uh, yeast to the water. This experiment need time? Uh, five minutes. Five minutes. You will put anything else? I will come back to you again. What's your project, Rahma? Uh, pencil conduct to electricity. Okay. Pencil conduct to electricity. Okay. Can you show me? Wow. 
So what is the scientific base of your experiment, which is wow, really wow? Uh, blood works. Blood works as good as uh, electron conduct. Electron conduct. So the lead, it's like the wire, is a good conductor of electricity. Thank you so much. You don't need this. Mm. Okay, show me your experiment. What's your experiment? Uh, vinegar, uh, volcano, vinegar volcano. Another vil vinegar volcano, okay. Hmm. This uh, water uh, have uh, food color and uh, vinegar and uh, soup. Hey Mustafa, what you do? Yes, I have to put 100 milliliter of water inside each one of them, then put uh, three or four drops inside each one, then I have to put the celery. Oh, wow. Just tell me that you finished your project. <laughs> wow. What is the scientific base of your project? Uh, the vinegar and the carbonate uh, get uh, carbo car uh, react and get uh, react uh, make make uh, chemical uh, reaction. Okay, so what is the type of gas that produced from chemical reaction? Carbon dioxide. Thank you so much. Hey, Mustafa. Uh, I put the, I, cu I cut one of them. I have to put one cutting and one uncutting. To the one it, that's cutting will change and will make the blue color brighter, but the another one will not. Okay, so it's knee time? Yeah, uh, 20 minutes. What's the scientific base of your project? Sorry? Sorry? What's the scientific base of your project? What's the difference between two of them? Uh, the difference, the, this one, the cutting, the celery that is cutting will make it brighter, but the other one, no, will not make it. Okay, thank you so much. Omar Fouad, I think the last one. Omar? Sand, you didn't get the sand. You are amazing, really amazing. Yes. Okay. Hmm. Need a little bit more time. More time. Okay, can you tell us what happened in the yeast? It reproduces. How is it produces? To produce what? You will put a balance? Uh, it reproduces. Uh, because it's your salary, it reproduces asexually. asexually. The oxide escape out of the bottle. Fermentation? Because of the fermentation, it reproduces carbon dioxide. Thank you so much. So now you have the sand. What's your project? Black snake. Okay. I have a spoon, uh, sodium carbonate, and um, spirit. Okay, sir. Mm, first of all, 
And a lighter and a sugar. Show us your part. So, uh, I'm gonna mix the sugar with the sodium carbonate. Then I'm gonna, then I'm gonna uh, start mixing them with a the spoon. Then I'm gonna put some spirit on the sand. Fire, so you want it to burn us? Sorry? You want, you want it to burn us? No. Especially me, right? I know. <laughs> I'm gonna use the lighter to light it. So what happens here? You mean the conclusion? Conclusion. Um, the the sodium the, the baking soda burns uh, it produces uh, carbon dioxide um, and water and um, sodium carbonate. Then the sugar produces water and uh, carbon dioxide. Um, in the end, the carbon dioxide um, produ produces a carbon from uh, a carbon of ashes resembling a snake. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, 7A. So, yes, it's amazing. So this is carbon dioxide. Okay, well done, well done, grade 7A. Thank you so much. Thank you for your efforts. Hi guys, thank you very much for coming today and seeing us together. First, I want to ask you some questions to provide you some information. Uh, one, two of the famous uh, questions, uh, and two of the famous questions. First, the fear of what animal is known as arachnophobia? There are three choices. Snakes, spiders, and scorpions. You can choose from them. Uh, do you need to hear the question again, or did you all hear it? Repeat the question, Abdullah. The fear of what animal is known as acrinophobia? Some people are afraid of certain animals. Okay, so there is a certain fear called arachnophobia. It's fear of which animal? If you know, please raise your hands. And if you don't know, try to guess, because you said we will choose from the parents. Can you say the choices again? Snakes, spiders, and scorpions. Just guess. <laughs> okay, I have someone there. Okay. I'm uh, so afraid from a snake. Answer to no. Is it correct, snakes? No. No, so another try. 
What are the two other choices? Is spiders and scorpions. Spiders or scorpions? Who wants to take another guess? Hmm. Would you guess? Would you like to guess? Spiders or scorpions? Maybe spiders. Is spiders correct? Yes, it's correct. Yes. Well done. <laughs> Okay, so uh, while we wait for 7B, who are coming next, here's a song about the Big Bang, how the world started. The second question second is, question. Okay. what is the only country in the world that doesn't have any mosquitoes? And the clue is that its uh, weather is so cold. Give them choices. Give them choices, okay. please. Iceland or UAE, uh, aka Emirates or Australia. So the question again: Which is the only country that does not have mosquitoes? These annoying insects. Is it? Can you say the answers? Uh, the choices? Iceland, Emirates, or Australia. Emirates or Australia, uh, or Iceland. Emirates or Australia? And it's snow in the winter. I think you can go and try to let anyone guess. You okay. choose someone and let them guess. Oh, go pick someone and let them guess. Except Karim. Okay. Iceland? Iceland? Yes, it's right. Because it's the only country that has zero population of this annoying ink. Insects. And according to the scientists, the oceanic climate of Iceland keep the mosquitoes at the bay. Keep it away. Thank you very much. So I think everyone's ready, so we'll have to stop, pause this song, and we'll play it later. I like the song. 7B, how are you? Uh, you okay? Ready? You look different than, than the class. Why are you so tense? Relax, relax. Okay, let's start with the one that will take a bit of time. Good morning. Uh, what's your experiment? Black snake. Black snake. Black snake. Black snake. Why do they call it black snake? Because it, uh, uh, there's like a a black thing, like the, the snake that comes out of the sand. So we'll see something black coming out of the sand, okay? You can start and tell us what you're doing while you're working. Well, first we will need a, a ball and a baking soda. Tell us why you're working. You can start working and... Do. We will add first the sand. And the metal ball. And it has to be metal. Because we will light it and the plastic could melt. Just you need it to be straight, so just it's get more like to be yeah, like good. Second, then we will make a hole in the sand. Then we ha we'll add alcohol. We will add the alcohol. Just we will spread it in the sand. We will spread it in the sand. Then we will get something to mix in. Then we will add four spoons of sugar. And five spoons of baking soda. What happens if we change the amounts and we didn't use the same amount? It wouldn't get the, um, yani the thing you want. It, it will be... Um, wouldn't get the texture. It, it will be more smaller. And it will not be the big... After mixing it, you put it in the hole and you put it in. Yeah, 
قلبتنا فور كنز قلبيهم قلبتهم قلبيهم تاني then we will add more alcohol um, on the sugar and baking soda why do we need the alcohol so it's get fire it's fire it's to catch up fire so it's flammable it catches fire okay then we will light all of the mixture So it's is it going to come out immediately or we'll wait a while? No, like we'll see how it's. So we'll pass around and continue working on it, and we'll see how it looks like after a while. Okay? So hello, hello girls. Hi Jamila. Hi Nadine. So what's your experiment today? Um, our experiment is called the egg experiment, like the word experiment, but with the word egg in it. So it's a pun. Yeah. Clever. That's clever. Okay. So can you see what you're going to do? Or are you? Okay. Um, what happens is that we have an egg, a normal egg that we cook with, the normal one we have every day, we, which is like this one. Um, and we put it in vinegar any normal vinegar that you have at home. And we leave it for exactly two days and the outcome will be that the egg will be kind of bouncy. Let me show you the outcome. Can you show us how it's bouncy? Like press on it like this to see the... Te oh. Is this a raw egg or was it cooked? No, no, it's raw. It's raw and became bouncy like that. And you didn't peel the, uh, the shell. It was with the no, shell. No. The shell, um, the truth is, the shell is actually calcium carbonate or calcium hydroxide. It's the same thing. And when it's put with an acid, a weak acid like vinegar, it um, turns into carbon dioxide bubbles, which proves that this is actually calcium carbonate. And um, it actually um, just dissolves into something, um, it's calcium, normal pure calcium carbonate, and you can use that in three things that are really useful. Um, for example, you can use it in um, dog medicines, and? And we can use it to make a, we can use it to make a vertile for the soil. Make the soil more fertile, and we can use them to make um, calcium acetone or nail polish remover. And um, so we're going to show you how did we get this outcome. But this outcome is a little bit bigger with, from the outcome that comes out of the normal vinegar egg because we use something a little bit different to make it more wow. And I'm going to tell you that, but let's just show you how do we make it bouncy in the first place. First we, will get a, first we will get a jar, then we will put the egg inside the jar carefully. Stun. And then we will put the vinegar until it, it over closed the egg. Covers the egg. And then we will leave it for two days and when we see there is the carbonate that comes that there is the carbon dioxide oxy oxygen that comes out from the egg and then after two days this will become like a calcium into, into the top of the into the top Can of I the jar for a second mm -hmm. i'm sorry um you see clearly those white bubbles on the egg the white bubbles on the egg that's the calcium carbonate okay Okay, so you just leave that for two days and it becomes bouncy, but be careful to not pop it. It's not really that strong. You just should keep it um, careful and yeah, it should work. Now, to make the egg a little bit bigger, just like this one. Um, you need a jar. Take a normal egg like this one. Put it in the egg carefully. Put it in the jar, sorry, carefully. 
Make sure it doesn't break. And put, um, this part is a little bit tricky. You can use maple syrup to enlarge the egg, but you keep it for one day. Or you can use molasses, which is black honey, um, which is a normal thing that most of us have at home. Um, and, but the, the, the weird thing is that after that, you need to put it in some vinegar because when you leave it for one day, or probably let's just say like half a day, which is 12 hours, um, the egg is kind of, you know, like not that strong as this one. If I show you this one, it's tough, you know, it looks tough. But when I placed it in the molasses the first time when I was testing it, it was really soft and rubbery and if I like pressed too hard, it was going to crack. So what you need to do is just leave it in the vinegar and it becomes hard and it just um, enlargens even more. So let me show you. After that, can we see how the egg looks like from the inside? What? Can we see how the egg looks like from the inside? Okay. There is a one that's cracked already. Yes. Uh, yeah. What about it? There is a one that was made with the, the vinegar, the bound egg with the vinegar, and then it we, Can we see it? Do you have it now? But it's cracked. It's pretty disgusting. <laughs> to be honest. That's science. Yeah, it's a part of science. Yeah. As you can see, I don't know if you can see or not, but it's actually a normal egg, like it just cracks, but the yolk is kind of, I'm wearing gloves so I'm gonna touch it. Okay, yeah. It's kind of, you know, it's still, it's still, yeah. It holds itself, it's not. Yeah, but it can still break. Don't do this at, at home, it's disgusting. <laughs> Honestly, like. Unless you like experimenting like us. We're doing this for you guys. <laughs> But didn't you enjoy it? Yeah, it was really fun and the science fair is a really, really good experience for us. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, girls. Okay, Jenna, how are you? Nadine, sorry, how are you? Uh, what's your experiment? A water dispenser machine. Can you see it? How does it work? How does it work? When we open the lid of the bottle, the water will fall. When we open the lid of the bottle, the water will fill in the cup. So it's instead of the big water dispenser that we use, this is a portable one that we can control the amount of water. Okay, can you show us how, how it works? And if you want to make it stop, what would you do? We're going to close the bottle. To control exactly the amount that you need? Yes. That you need? Yes. And so now I can take it and drink, right? Thank you. So this is maybe, who can use it? What's the, what's, why is it better than a normal water bottle? You can control the amount. Control the amount, that's important, okay. While using the normal bottle, you cannot use it. Thank you, thank you so much. Jamie, how are you? Okay, what's your experiment? Uh, do it yourself, love a lamb. Raise your voice, please. Do it yourself, love a lamb. Love a lamb, okay. Let's see. Just uh, put some oil. So you're adding what to what? Oil to water. Oil to water, raise your voice. <laughs> Then I'll add an effervescent tablet. An effervescent tablet, okay. No, first uh, food coloring. Lastly, I will put uh, an effervescent tablet. Nice. 
Why did you break it? Uh, because يعني, it has a strong uh, reaction. It will make the reaction stronger or faster? So can you hold it? Can you hold it to see what's going on down there? Wow. What's going on, Shemi? Why is this happening? Why is this happening? Because uh, we can see bubbles, we can see two different layers. So why is that? Because the frozen tablet made an reaction with the water. And why do we have two different layers? One at the bottom that is red and one up that's yellow. The water is, has less density than oil. More, more density. The water has more density, that's why it stays. Can you see the bubbles? They're very beautiful. Can you see them? Okay. Well done, Shami. Amazing. So instead of buying an expensive lava lamp, we can do this at home, right? Thank you. Hello, girls. Hi. How are you? Great. Uh, electronics. Okay, can I come here for the camera? What do you have? Um, a variable speed motor, and, and we uh, also have a Tesla coil. Okay. We're going to start with the variable speed motor. Okay, so we do this. What's a variable speed motor? What does it do? Actually, a motor or like a CD that turns, uh, like when it turns, it lights up the LED lights. It connect. It conducts energy to it. The more the speed actually the, the CD turns, or the more you turn the variable resistor, the, lighter the light the light the, the LED lights actually get brighter. Can you show us in action? You know we, we do not listen. Like students in class, we cannot concentrate unless we see it work. We're going to be putting the variable speed resistor to the right, just like so. And when you put it, the CD speeds faster, conducting more energy to the LED lights, ca causing them to be brighter. And the, m the less you, like, you turn it to the left, the speed slows down, and the LED lights actually lose its brightness. And if you change them to, um, like here, they're negative and positive. If you, if you change them to positive and negative, it will change direction, and the other group of LED light will light up. This one? Relax, relax. So now the other group of LED lights will turn, and the CD will turn the other way. The opposite direction. So you controlled the amount of energy that you needed. You control the direction, whichever one you want to work. We can also, uh, like, we can leave these in their places, and we can change the direction from the, the from the cable itself. How can we do that? We can actually, there is like um, a power or a switch in which if we turn the other way, okay. or not this one, if we turn this one the other way, going change around. the direction of the current. Yes. As you can see here, the other the other group of LED lights have to. So now it turns the other way. Since we changed it from the bottom or the main cable, it's just the same idea of these cables actually. That's very and this one, it's very hypnotizing. If you look at it for a long time, we'll be hypnotized. We actually <laughs> made it like the colors in horizontal lines, not in circular. If when we turn it, it will turn white. white. <laughs> That's great. Amazing. Well done. Yes, yes. You want to show us the Tesla coil? Moving on to the Tesla coil. And actually it's called Tesla coil because the scientist himself is named um, Tesla. And he invented it. Uh, the, tools or the tools that we're actually going to need is a 9V battery. And it's connected in which we can get from any electric store. We also need an on and off switch. An electric board. An electric board. Um, a wire. Cables. A cable. We are also going to need a plastic ball. An aluminum foil. Aluminum foil. And we're going to need a plastic tube. And a copper wire. Okay, 
Okay, so the first thing you're going to do, you're going to be putting, um, you're going to be connecting this to the batteries. Then you're going to be turning it on. Then it will light up without the lamp itself being connected to any electricity, except the magnetic field. That's the one we talked about earlier. Can you show us? Can I try to hold it and see how it lights? So we also. Uh, so w w what? What? How? F why is it that when I come so light here, right here, it's still lighting up, right? Yes. When I go far a bit far away, because it turns off. Field, because like um, the magnetic field the actually um, moves in circles all around the Tesla itself. Mm -hmm. So the more you get away from it, like the less the magnetic field's power will be. So it will actually be hard for it to light up the light bulb from a far distance. But we can actually measure yes. the magnetic field using a mobile app. It's called uh, Magnetic Field Measurer. Detector. Detector. And the circus, um, like, go in X, Y, Z. The X. The X is actually the line going up. The Y is this one, or it's actually this one. And the Z is the one going down. And only the X um, increase. And the Y and the Z, or, or, like, they always be in a negative, and they always decrease. Yes, because they're actually moving in an opposite way. They're not going up, they're going down. Okay, and that's so, Yeah, how can we know? How, uh, should it give us a light or a signal, some sort of signal? Um, it's, yes, it's actually, actually supposed, supposed to, to beep. beep. But I, it's not, the beeping is not working. And again, that's part of experimenting. Sometimes things work and sometimes they don't work. That's science. We, I saw it before and it was working. So that's all. Maybe after they go right back to the classroom, it will work. Again, that's science and experiments. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lujian. OK, move to the side. Good morning, Noor. Good morning. What? Taking a break from electricity, okay? <laughs> How are you, Noor? Fine. Experiment? Volcano. Can you see it, please? We have, we have this soap and vinegar, food color, and the baking soda. Can you show us what's going to happen while working? Explain it while working. F first, we put uh, five spoons of baking soda. Then we put the soap. Then vinegar. Then the wood color. It's cutting out. So is something happening inside? Yes. So it's taking a long time. Can you tell me why it's taking a long time? Because we didn't put a lot of vinegar. Okay, so you needed to increase the amount of vinegar, maybe? Yes. In real life, does the volcano erupt very fast or does it take a long time? No, oh, uh, very fast. Very fast, but sometimes it can take a long time, right? So there's another reason why we cannot see it. Maybe because the volcano, this one is too high, so it's going to take longer time? Mm, yes. Maybe. Okay, it's coming close to the surface now. There we go. 
What's that that's coming up? When we mix the baking soda and the vinegar, it, uh, you know, it get out uh, because the vinegar, uh, when we put it, uh, the acid and base, you know, get out. The acid, and base, the acid and base react and they produce some gases. What's this gas? Uh, carbon. Uh, sorry, oxygen. oxygen. You were closer before. Uh, Carbon dioxide. Yes, carbon dioxide. Well done. Thank you, Noor. <laughs> Abdurrahman, busy talking to Noor? Should I pass? Uh, really? Okay, Abdurrahman, what's your experiment? The hydraulic lift. Hydraulic lift. What's the meaning of hydraulic? Hydraulic is the fluid motion, and the, and the hydraulic lift is a device that uses fluids to lift up objects. Wow, so only with a liquid we can lift heavy objects? Can we see that? Yeah. Try it first? No, just tell me what you wanted to say. What? It uses a principle called Pascal's principle. The, uh, Pascal's principle, like when pressure is applied to, to liquid enclosed in a container, the liquid, uh, the pressure is transmitted in, uh, in full to all, part, to all parts of the liquid and to the walls of the container as well. Okay, so I think we'll understand better when we see it. What's this that you're doing? This is, this is a syringe that I will press the syringe to, to make the fluid go to the other syringe so it rises it up. So we have here another syringe? Yes, we have here another one that pushes it. Can you explain the structure? First show us what it does and then explain the structure. And when it descends, it, we have to pull it back. So you really are lifting it with only liquid. What's this liquid inside? Only water. Only water. So can you explain the connection? How are they connected? Can you tell me? Yes. <laughs> the cannula. What do we call this? The cannula. OK. We attach a cannula to the syringe with the water. So we push it and attach a larger one here. So. So the force is smaller when we push it, so it doesn't have to be, take a lot of time with, with pushing. That's great. How can we use it? Why is it useful? It's used for, for example, for garages with, with, well, with a lot of levels and with a lot of floors. They use, they use such hydro, use hydraulic lifts, but in a larger way, to lift cars up and take them down. That's very... Some people lift objects as well. Like when someone is moving to another apartment and they want to lift their furniture, maybe? Maybe, yeah. Maybe. Okay, well done, Abdurrahman. Thank you very much. <laughs> Morning. Yusuf, what's your experiment? The glow-in-the-dark um, slime. A glow-in-the-dark slime. And anything else you wanted to do? Yeah, I wanted to do a science trick. I... I will make the tea bag flies. The tea bag will fly on its own? Yeah. Let's see. Get the, we will get a tea bag and we will remove the, the paper of it and the string. Just, just, okay, work with it. Okay, and we will set it on the table on a non flammable surface. But it should be like a, a, a cylinder. And we will fire it up. Hold on. Wow. What's going on, Yusuf? Why did it fly like this? Because uh, when it burned, the hot, mole uh, the hot molecules in the hot air uh, is pushing up toward the cold air. So which has more density, the hot air or the cold air? The hot air. The hot air more density? No, the cold air. So the hot air less density, that's why it's flu? Yes. 
well done. And what's the other thing that you got? This was just a magic trick, Bon a bonus experiment. Okay, what's your experiment? Uh, glue in the dark and uh, slime. Okay, can you tell us? You, you prepared it before, right? Yes. You're going to tell us how it's done? Yes. We will, uh, we will add the uh, glue and uh, phosphorescent gel. Phosphorescent, the, the thing that they use in anything that's, uh, that illuminates in the dark, right? Yes. You can even see from the color. Yeah. It shows that it lights up in the dark. Yeah. And we will use the dish soap. We will add the glue in the a clear uh, jar. And we will uh, add with it in the same time the, the gel and mix it well. And then add the dish soap so it uh, holds, holds itself. It binds it, it will bind it together. And then it will be like the, the slime. And when we put it in a box, or a dark box, uh, it will glow. Can maybe try, we're not sure because the lights are a lot here, but you can try to put, of course, you can. It's too light in here, but I think if you take it in a dark room, we will be able to see it and you can play with it, right? Yes. Well done, Yusuf, thank you very much. So instead of buying a lava lamp or slime from outside, we can come to you guys and you will make it for us. Okay, he's very eager. Okay, Ali, <laughs> what's your experiment? It's a homemade AC. It's a homemade AC, wow, okay. Can you keep your questions at the end? Okay. He's asking me to keep my questions in the end. I'm honest, I just say everything. Okay, so go ahead. Have you ever been hot in summer? Of course you are. And because of that, we're producing for you a homemade AC with simple tools and simple steps. Simple steps. Our steps are? Our steps are, like, the first step is... The first step is you get a, a chart of photo foam and cut it into certain ways so you could like design a box to... You can, you can indicate your yeah, like this is the photo foam like, and we designed the box with it. Second, we are getting uh, something called heat sink with fan with two wires for connection to just connect the electricity. And then we get a, a thermoelectric cooling with two wires also for connection. Then we get some glue and put it on the Peltier model, which is also the thermoelectric cooling. Second, we are replacing the Peltier model and the heat sink with fan. And then get us another simple heat sink and place it on the Peltier model. Then we'll get a fan the same size as the heat sink, so we can place it on it. I know you guys, you said I shouldn't interrupt, but we have to see it. Can you show us these things? I don't understand what you're talking about, so we have to see them, okay? Okay, so this is the back of the AC. First off, I like the design. It looks very much like a real AC. Yeah, there is um, air coming out. If you put... Ready? Yes, if you put this tissue, so it is... Would you like to pick someone to come and try to see okay. if we have... Of course. Smarwa, huh? can you... Yeah, I'll take it to my office. Okay. I love it. Wow. Okay, keep it in my office, okay? okay. Great job. So far. Thank you. So to see the construction, how it's made, what do we have at the back? Uh, and we're putting a main wire to connect all the fans with each other and to connect that main switch to turn it on and off. How many fans do we have here? Uh, three fans. Okay, can... Yes. Now here, over here, we are working on three fans connected together with the two things. This mixture is having... Can you see the three fans? Yes, these are the... Three. Oh, they are... Fans. Take it. What 
This is a mixture of a kind of gel with uh, some ferrule. The ferrule, it is a chemical... Uh, it is something like the dry ice, which is getting uh, cold air to the AC and it is in all of the ACs in the life here. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, can you? Ibrahim, how are you? I'm fine. What do we have here? Uh, we're going to make a Bluetooth uh, uh, light bulb. A Bluetooth light bulb. So what's the Bluetooth part? Uh, it's a Bluetooth connector that you can connect it from uh, your mobile. Uh, you're just going to download an app from the phone. It's called Blue Term. Uh, as you can see here, we can. Um, w the thing that we're going to need in this project is an Arduino Uno and a relay because uh, the light bulb is 220 voltage, but the cables are 5 voltage. Um, so we need the relay so it transfers the 220 voltage into 5 voltage. Okay, um, we're going to need anything that can support 5 voltage. I used a, P a PS2. Um, so we're just going to turn it on. Uh, the cables will start receiving messages from the Arduino and send it to the, the cable connectors. Um, so it sends messages to the Bluetooth and the Bluetooth sent messages to Arduino. Okay. So we just connected from here, from the Arduino, uh, blue term, uh, HC05. When it's connected, we're going to put this cable. I have to wait until it's connected to connect the cable? Yeah. As you can see here, just a second. We're going to press zero. It's going to turn off. But we'll press one. It turns on. So, um, can I try? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, you can uh, try from a long distance. You can try from a long distance. So can, you, can you take it and move and let's see how far it will reach? So that's smart houses, connecting electricity from far away. Okay. Controlling uh, the house and the lights. So it's lighting from this far. Can you go a bit further? Maybe give it to someone who's sitting and let him try. He says one and zero, on and off. If it's not work, oh, that far, wow. <laughs> Amazing, Raheem. Well done. Zero and one, on and off. Yeah. <laughs> so, Ibrahim, does this work for lamps only? Uh, no, it works for lamps and anything that you can control from the Arduino chip. Like what, for example? Um, you can use a fan. Um, an AC can work, actually, with a phone. So okay, well, you can, if you can work their AC with yours, right? You can control it from your program. Yeah. Uh, we can yeah, use the... Uh, yes? Can you connect it right now? Yes. He's asking if you can connect it right now. I'll leave you guys to try it. We'll go to someone else, and then we'll see. We're experimenting right now. We didn't try this before. Okay, uh, Luigi, you said yours is working, the beeper, so we can test the beeper. So um, after checking, we knew that it had to work with um, only internet. What? Internet. internet. So they needed internet. That's why that was the simple glitch. Okay, let's see. So we're going to press start. And it's going to beep because of the magnetic field. And even if we go further, it will still beep. So you can move further to see how far the magnetic field is. Just walk slowly. This far? Yes, we can actually go further. So all of this is detecting the magnetic field as long as it's beeping. But it doesn't actually, but it doesn't actually, uh, it, it, it isn't actually capable of lighting the light bulb from that far. Because the light bulb needs to be as close as possible to it. We have a magnetic field, but it's a, it's a weak one, not very strong, right? Thank you guys, well done. So we give it a chance and it will work. We have to keep trying. Yusuf, good morning, Yusuf. 
What do you have for us? So I have egg in a bottle. Egg in a bottle? Yeah, so the steps. I mean the tools first. You have. What is it going to do? Uh, it's about like a glass bottle and like the eggs just get pulled in it by the heat pressure. Okay, let's, see. let's see. The tools, you have an egg, matches, and a, and a bottle of glass. I only lose like a lighter so like it's easier to light them up. So you place like three or two like matches on the egg. It's not it's not like not important to pull like much. It's just like the same thing in the end. So you hold that bottle. And as you see, it got pulled into. It's not that much, because like, if you put more lighters, it might not put it that much. How did it go inside? What, how, it got sucked right away. How is that possible? If you put it, like, when the matches are in the egg and like, the flames reaches the bottle, like, it, get, like, it, like, it, it zooms the air, and it makes the bottle just like a vacuum that pulls everything in front of it. And at first it wasn't fitting, and right now it fell down. Yeah, like even if you tried pulling it out when it's on without matches, it'll just come easily. But if you put it right now and you're trying to put it, it's hard to get it out. So you also affected uh, pressure with temperature, right? Is, is, this, is this applied in real life? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you told me before that this concept, we can apply it somewhere. Uh, it's like cupping. Cupping therapy, right? Or what do they call it? Sometimes people call it what in Arabic? Hijama. Jam, okay, so it works in the same technique? Exactly. Amazing. Thank you, Yusuf. Well done. Anything else you want to see? Maya, good morning, Maya. What do we have here? Crystals. Crystals, okay. We can make crystals Are you on your own? Yes. How's the, how do you do them? Uh, first, we will get a piece of metal and tie it with a thread, and tie the thread with a wooden stick. Uh, then we will boil a half cup of water and, uh, and add food coloring and potassium sulfate, four or five spoons of potassium sulfate. Uh, and then uh, put, it in, uh, put it in the cup and leave it for one day. Then it will form a crystal, like this. So after one day, you had this one? These crystals? Wow. You know we can make the jewelry with them? You can make necklaces, yes, and bracelets. That's how I think girls, how girls think anyway. So how did it come to be? What made it hold itself and form a crystals like this? Uh, because uh, of the metal. The metal is like a starting point and the potassium sulfate form around it and made the crystal. We tried it before in class and it didn't work. Why? Do you remember? Because we didn't boil the water and we put, uh, we didn't put a uh, a, a, a big amount of potassium sulfate. So now you know that you needed to change the amount and you needed to boil the water. Thank you very much. Well okay, um, the last group that we left off with the black snake. Did the black snake work? It's, it's still on fire. Yeah. Still on fire? Yes. So you had troubles with the fire, that's okay. Yes. It's the, the black snake that we need because the fire and the fan, it's had a, a big problem that the, the fire wasn't standing enough. Okay, as long as you know why it didn't work, that's okay. So we can fix it and we'll do it some other time. But, but already we see here, there's a black part that's forming, it's solid and it's holding itself. What's that? This is the black snake. It's the, this is the, the conclusion of the, the, baking, the baking soda and the sugar that we burned, we lighted up. The, so this is the... Uh, the sodium bicarbonate breaks down while burning the sugar um, in oxygen, produces water vapor and uh, carbon dioxide gas. Uh, and the snake is carbonate with black carbon particles. Thank you. Okay, so you have another one that you'll do? It's called elephant, elephant toothpaste. Why do they call it elephant toothpaste? I like to ask so many questions, I'm sorry. Why do they call it elephant toothpaste? It's like the toothpaste and uh, the shape is like the, ele the elephant. It's like it's the, the elephant in him. Sorry. Uh, the texture is like toothpaste and it's big, so it's called elephant toothpaste. So it's not toothpaste for humans, it's toothpaste for elephants. Okay, let's see. The tools are um, hydrogen peroxide, food coloring, 
uh, three packs of yeast, dish soap and a spoon, scissors um, and a flask and a beaker and warm water. So first we will need the, the dish soap and we put it in the in a warm water. Then we will get the second beaker and add um, the three packs of yeast in uh, 100 milli of water, warm water. We will add a few drop. We will add a few drops of the food coloring. And the food coloring is optional, just to give it um, bright color. The thicker, the thicker this yeast mixture is, the better the the chemical reaction is. How many times did you try it? Um, four. four or five. So by now you know the right amounts that you need and so? Then we will add the, the hydrogen peroxide. In the mixture, in the mixture of the um, dish soap, food coloring and water. Just be careful so we need to don't burn anything. Just we will add some of it. Just be careful that you close it well so it didn't mess up. Can we handle hydrogen peroxide with our hands or without gloves? Yes. Hydrogen peroxide, can we handle it without gloves? So wear gloves and we, we can ask for a help from an adult. The reason you need warm water is to make the yeast um, melt in the, the water. Mix and be active, more like it. What happens if I use boiling water? It will mix faster. Will it work? Yes. I think, but it will not make, like, will not blow up like first, Yanni. I think in the, um, in the warm water it will blow up first and be better. Actually, if used boiling water, the active materials in the yeast will not work. Yes. You will be like killing them. So that's why you need it warm, not boiling. We mixed it, we mixed it well, and then we will add the yeast. Just hear what will happen. Now this is, this is the time the reaction is going to happen. Should I go far away? It's a foamy structure, and it's hot. I can feel, can feel heat. It's getting, it's getting a heat, and it's getting like a smell of burning, something of burning. It's, and it's getting a heat, so don't hold it. And the conclusion is the elephant toothpaste is the decomposition process of hydrogen peroxide, while the, while the yeast works to break down the hydrogen peroxide into oxygen and water. Um, and the soap works to be mixed with the oxygen and water, um, uh, which turns to foam. The other, the other, the other, <laughs> the observation is when we add the yeast mixture into the uh, hydrogen peroxide mixture, it explodes and makes a foamy texture, and it also produces heat and carbon dioxide. And we added this soap to make it a foamy texture. Excellent. Amazing. Well done, guys. Thank you very much. And finally, with the experiment that we're trying for the first time now on stage, let's see if the smart system is going to operate the AC. In English, please. Now we're going to turn on the, the button from here. Turn it on. Uh, the Arduino chip is now memorized to my phone. Uh, now I'm going to press one. As you can see, you can look here. It worked. It worked. So, can I try? Yeah. And it also works from distance. It also works from distance. So, zero, zero and one, right? Yeah, zero. Just press zero. No, it turned off. Uh, it just takes time to. to uh, yeah. It's time for the fans to stop. Yeah. What we want. If, if you press one now. 
the fans. We see it already. The fans are stopping and they're slowing down. Yeah. Uh, when you press one, the, the fans. You can discuss it with each other. I think the AC it is putting up because when it have a, a large pressure of, uh, of air, so it can cover all of the room, for example. But uh, the hot air has uh, more density than the cold air. Oh, yes. So when we go, so when we uh, put the AC uh, the, uh, up. It goes the uh, it uh, the the cold air uh, goes down and the hot air becomes the. Uh, so I put the heater down. Miss, it is like the same. Something stupid in the social. Ali, we're with you, Ali. <laughs> okay. The hot air, like what he's trying to think, is like the hot air rises and the cold air sinks. Yes, we took it. We took something in the social. Like uh, it is something called Al Amtar Tasaudi. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Now, now we're mixing subjects again. Science is life. Okay. I'm in the mixing little yeah, projects. <laughs> okay. So when the cold air and the hot air comes between each other, so the hot air comes down and the cold air goes up it. So it. Yani. <laughs> Thank you, Ali. We will reach the concept, yes, and like Yusuf, like you said, and like Ali and you said, because the cold air falls down, it's had more density, that's why I put the AC up and the heater down, because it has less density. Thank you very much, 7B. Well done. <laughs>